What's going on YouTube? So today I'm going to show you how to change out an old outlet. So we have this outlet at my parents' house that's kind of worn out. They built the house probably about 30 years ago. As you can see here, it's it's a uh, pretty worn out. It doesn't even have a cover on it, but it's pretty easy to unplug and plug things in. So things tend to kind of fall out. Uh, also, as you can tell, it is the ground for this one is broken off, as you can see right here. So that's not safe, I don't think. But either way, we're gonna replace that today, and I'm gonna show you how to do that. So I'm not an electrician by any means, but I replaced my uh, many outlets in my time. I told my dad to go ahead and buy, don't buy the cheap 99 cent ones, but don't buy the $15 one. Uh, all he needs is a 15 amp uh, outlet, so I, go, I went and told him, you know, spend $1.20, $1.50, maybe $2. So he went and got one of these, which I, I like this brand. Uh, I brought this one, too, just to show you kind of what you can expect. This one, as you can see right here, it's got plastic on the actual two prongs here. And this is called temper-proof for the outlet. Um, back in the day, they used to, for kids, so they don't put anything in, stick any metal objects or any objects, period, into outlets, um, they got those plastic covers that go over these, but with these, you don't need those at all. But since my parents are above the age of having kids anymore, and this is kind of in the garage area, I'm not really worried about the grandkids getting into it, and plus, my daughter doesn't stick her hand in, or fingers in light sockets or anything like that. Let me get started with showing you what kind of tools that you probably should have to go ahead and do this project. So the ones that I recommend are you got a non-contact voltage detector. So this, you go to any outlet or anything any anything that has power, you're gonna be able to tell it'll beep at you if there's power to that switch or outlet. And then you have a tester, and this will be nice once we wire it back up just to make sure it's wired correctly. And then you'll have, these are wire cutters. I recommend a good pair of these just in case you have to, uh, when you, just in case when you take the old wire off the old outlet, you may need to cut it and strip it back to get uh, some fresh um, curls on it. And then also, lastly, I recommend a pick, a sharp pick. You may not need this. You'd only need this if uh, the outlet has been stabbed in the back by the actual wire. Um, you would need this to press in and release that wire. And then lastly, I recommend some electrical tape. And I'll show you what I use that for. You don't necessarily have to, but I tape up the outlet on the inside so that way the ground wire doesn't touch on any of the terminals. Also what I use, I got one of these uh, to Klein digital circuit breaker finder and this is nice. You're gone up and down your stairs trying to make sure, turn off the breaker, go upstairs, find out if the breaker was right, go back downstairs, turn it on, turn it back off. You won't need to do that with this. So this is probably about 50 to $60. I'll link it, I'll link all these items down below in the description. Um, this will allow you to plug this into the outlet that you're checking and then go down to the circuit breaker and I'll show you and then this will point to the outlet or the circuit breaker that that outlet is on. Um, it comes with uh, extra tools so that way if you use a light socket you can plug this into the light socket and then plug this into it and then also you have you can plug this into this and then if you you plug these two leads into the actual um, wires. If you just have, say, just a, two, or you got wires hanging out and you don't even have an outlet on it at all. So we're gonna go ahead and get started with this to find out what breaker to turn off. All right, I wanted to show you how the non-contact voltage detector works. So you'll get next to any outlet and it should beep at you. So this means that this has power going to it right now. So what we're gonna do is you're gonna use the transmitter end Plug it in, it's gonna light up because it's got power right now. Then we're gonna use this end and take it down to the uh, take it down to the breaker box and find out what breaker is for this outlet and turn it off. Once I turn it off, it should turn off this light as well, and I should be able to use this as well, and it shouldn't beep at all. Uh, most likely it's gonna turn off the light, the lights in the garage as well, so I got a flashlight. I forgot to mention you might want to add that to your list as well. All right, now that we're downstairs into the breaker box, I'm gonna go ahead and turn on the circuit finder. And so the first pass, 
first pass is to make it learn. And then we need to find now, it's that one right there. So I can turn that one off. And we should essentially have that outlet out. No power to that outlet. So let's go check it. All right, so we lucked out. It actually didn't turn off the lights in the garage. So as you can see, the light is off here, but we can also unplug that and check. And it's not lighting us up. So we're good to go. This should not have power on it at all. So we'll take these screws out. But mount it to the outlet box. And just in case it is still live, which it's not, I always recommend just kind of pulling it out without touching the sides. So pull it out as far as you can. So as you can see here, there are white wires, black wires, and a ground. So what we want to do is usually what the standard is, the white wires go to the silver screws. And the black wires go to, if you can see it here, the gold screws, always. And then the ground just goes to the green ground. So now we verified that, that's the case. We didn't, they didn't switch it at the breaker box, which they shouldn't have. Now we can, we can unscrew these screws, and all these screws here, and take the wires off of the outlet and then we can wire them up to our new outlet. So let's go ahead and do that. All right, I'm gonna to try to do this without getting in the way. So let's take the flathead and, aha. So interesting, they stabbed the back of the, out, of the outlet, as you can see here, with the black wires, like I mentioned before, but they screwed the white wires to it. No, no big problem. No big deal there. Uh, it still works just fine. Um, some people prefer to stab the back of it. It's easier and quicker. It's preferred to uh, screw them with the screw. I've heard both sides. Uh, a lot of people don't like stabbing them in the back. As you can see here, actually, this outlet doesn't even have the ability to stab them in the back. This one does, as you can see here. See these little holes right here? So we'll go ahead and unscrew this side. I'm not left-handed, so I'll go ahead and unscrew it. And I always recommend unscrewing it all the way out, as far as out as you can go. Makes it easier. The screws will stop. Sorry, guys. the screwdriver. You gotta screw the ground too on there. And then just be able to kind of undo them. I'm probably gonna get, have to get a pair of pliers. I forgot to mention that you probably want to get a pair of pliers, needle nose pliers, so you can pry that out. And then also you can recrimp these a little bit. So these I will have to press in. There is a right there. You can press in and pull these out. So I'm going to try not to stab myself, but press it in, pull out, press in. Out. So now we have the outlet out. There you go. You can see it's broken at the bottom here. It doesn't have this little bottom part. So it essentially could, the ground wire could actually touch the actual ground of the outlet. So since these 
black wires, which are the hot wires, and the white wires are the neutral wires. Hot wires, I need to kind of curl. A little bit so that I go around the screw. Remember when we talked about I've got all this extra wire here? So if I wanted to, I could cut those off and get new wire out. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the outlet, the new one, and unscrew these screws all the way out. Uh, so black, which is hot, goes to gold, and white. Go, which is neutral, goes to uh, silver. All right, so we got the new outlet. And we have the screws all unscrewed all the way. So I'm gonna go ahead and start. So as you can see right there, we'll take the pair of pliers and kind of get it hooked around. And I can screw that one in. And so, just so you're aware, you always kind of loop it in the way you're going to screw the screw in. Once you're going to screw it in righty tighty, lefty lefty loosey. So you're going to screw it in righty tighty. Um, some of you guys, if you watched my video on adding an outlet above uh, for a TV, uh, I didn't screw the ground on correctly. I did it the other way. I mean, at the end of the day, it still works as long as this is connected to the screw. It still works, but if you do it lefty loosey, it'll try to unwind itself. Screw that in. Those are good. So we'll get these on, same way, and then the ground on. I'm not going to show that to you. It takes time. All right, now we're all done. Got these screwed on and the ground screwed. So what I do is I take electrical tape, just to be safe, and I wrap it around the outside of this so it covers up these screws and the screws on the other side and the ground screw, um, just to be safe. That way when you push all this stuff back in the outlet box, the ground doesn't short out against the neutral or the hot. You don't have to do it. I just do it. Just it's an extra step to be safe. go all taped up now I'm kind of shove these wires back into the box and then I can screw this back in in the box best you can because when you put the when you go to put the cover on it will uh, need to be centered as well actually it's got one screw so it won't be need to be, need to be centered All right, so the box is kind of in, recessed in the drywall, about a quarter inch. So I'm not gonna screw it all the way in or else this will be inside the drywall. And then when you go to put the cover on, it will break the cover or it'll be suck, sunk in. So now we're good to go. And I can go in, I can actually go and turn the breaker on and we should have power to this. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna plug the receptacle tester in here tell us make sure we got it right so it in theory should light up there's a red light and two orange lights or yellow it should light up the two yellows to uh, show that it's correct wiring and on the top it shows you if it's just one yellow it's open ground one yellow on the right it's open neutral if it's no lights at all it's just basically an open hot and then hot and ground reversed and then hot and neutral at first, and then correct wiring. So that'll tell you if you wired up correctly. So I'm gonna go down and turn the circuit breaker back on, and that should show up two yellows. So here you go. There you go. Got the two orange lights on, and we're good to go. So there you have it. We wired up a new outlet to replace the old one, the broken one, and we'll. He didn't, my dad didn't get a cover for it, so he's going to get another one. 
So right now we'll just leave it open. It's been like that for probably 15 years now. Maybe not that much, but either way, it'll be fine. So hopefully this helps you replace an outlet yourself. Uh, if you have any questions, come put them in the comments below. I will put all the tools I use in the description below as well. Uh, like I said, you don't need the circuit breaker finder, but it is nice to have for any other project as well. Um, it's not that much as far as expensive wise, um, but I'll go ahead and link it below so you can check it out yourself as well. If you want to see videos like this in the future, go ahead and make sure you subscribe and click that bell so that way you get a notification for any new videos that come out. Other than that, I'll see you next time.